Hey guys, would it uh, be possible if we did a colorless goblin noise? Shut, Shut up, up Gary. Gary. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. What's up, Spikes and Goblins? I'm Jan from the Spike Feeders, and I've taken over MTG Mudsta's channel today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This is a game that we got to play this year at Magic Fest Montreal. And today, I'm playing against Andrew, Mike, and Steve. So let's get into it. I'm playing Edgar Markov. My opening hand was Bloodlord of Vasgoth, Mavrin Vane, Dusk Apostle, Consuming Vapors, Plains, Urbog Volcano, Rakdos Signet, and Orzov Gilgate. Andrew is playing Tristani, who has Angel of Finality, Wall of Omens, Altar of Dementia, Sun Petal Grove, Bramble Sovereign, Beast Within, Forest. Mike was playing Angie Falconrath, playing Baron Moor, Two Mountains, Cinder Barons, Dark Withering, Viashino Sand Sprinter, Wildfire Devils. Steve is playing Rafik of the Many, with a Forest, Teferi's Protection, a Brainstorm, Eternal Witness, Okina, Temple to the Grandfathers, Island, and Steel of the Godhead. Andrew wins the die roll and starts us off. Andrew plays a forest. Steve follows up by playing an island. Mike plays a tapped Cinder Barons, passes the turn. Jan plays a tapped Nomad Outpost. Andrew then plays a tapped Stirring Wildwoods, and at the end of his turn, Steve casts a Brainstorm to draw three cards, and then he puts two back from his hand. Steve plays his Horizon Canopy. Mike plays a Mountain for the turn and passes. Jan plays a Plains and casts his Rakdos Signet. Andrew plays a Sun Petal Grove, tapping out for Cultivate. He passes the turn while searching for his basics. Steve flexes on everyone by playing an Expedition Mystic Gate and then passes the turn. Mike plays a Mountain, casts his Commander Anjay, Falconrath, and passes. Jan plays another Plains and activates his Signet for Mana and plays one Black for an Indulgent Aristocrat. This triggers Edgar Markov's Eminence ability, giving Jan a 1-1 Vampire token. Jan then plays Mavrin Vane, gaining another Vampire token. Andrew plays a Forest and casts a Wall of Omens, drawing a card as enters the battlefield. Steve plays a Forest, taps out for his Rafik, losing one life from tapping his Horizon Canopy. Mike plays a tapped Baron Moor, then activates Anjay's ability, discarding Dark Withering. He pays the black to cast it and targets Maverick. While I suggest taking out Rafik is a better idea, Mike is certain though and untaps Anjay and draws a card after the removal resolves. Mike passes his turn, and at the end of the turn, Andrew uses Beast Within to take out Rafik anyway. Jan plays a tapped Urborg Volcano and goes all in at Mike, swinging Team Edward right at him for three. Jan gains one life from the Aristocrat's lifelink and then passes the turn. Andrew plays a Blighted Woodland for the turn and taps out for an Uvenwald Hydra. It enters and he goes to find a land, grabbing a tapped Reliquary Tower before passing. Steve plays a tapped Breeding Pool, loses one life from tapping his Horizon Canopy again to help cast Eternal Witness, and returns the Brainstorm as it enters the battlefield. Steve passes. Mike draws and plays a Swamp for turn, while Steve uses Brainstorm again. Mike then taps 3 black mana for Ayara Fist of Lockwain, who enters and each opponent loses one life while he gains one. Jan plays a tapped Windscarred Craig and gains one life as it enters. He taps all of his mana for a Bloodlord of Vaskoth, gaining another vampire token off Edgar's Eminence ability. It's a good ability. He passes. Andrew plays a Plains and casts an Altar of Dementia in his main phase, then passes to Steve. Steve plays Okina, Temple to the Grandfathers, as his land for turn and also taps out, losing one off his Horizon Canopy to bring back Rafik. 
swings the 3-3 breeze that Andrew gave him at Andrew, how dare he, which he pumped by plus one plus one from Ravik's Exalted, and also gains double strike from the same triggered ability. Andrew blocks with a wall of omens, and with nothing else to do, Steve passes. Mike pays 5 in his main phase for a Bone Miser, who comes in and triggers Ayara. This has each of Mike's opponents losing another life, and he's going to gain one. Mike then passes. At the end of turn, Andrew activates the Blighted Woodland to sacrifice it and finds two basics. Jan plays an Evolving Wilds and heads to combat. He swings the Bloodlord at the only person who can't block it, Steve. Deals 3 damage. In his post-combat main phase, Jan sacrifices the wilds to find a basic swamp, comes into play its apt, then taps all of his mana for a Malakir Blood Witch, which has Edgar's Markov's triggering resolving first. Gains his 1-1 vampire token, and then the Blood Witch enters, triggering, raining all of my opponents for 7. The Blood Witch also comes in with 3-1-1 counters thanks to the Bloodlord's bloodthirsty ability. Andrew plays a forest and cycles a scattered grove. He then drops a Helm of the Host, but sadly doesn't quite have enough mana to equip it to his Hydra, but he does have enough for an Angel of Finality who enters the battlefield and exiles Steve's Brainstorm. Steve untaps and pays 3 for Steel of the Godhead, putting the aura onto Rafik and giving a plus 2 plus 2 unblockable and lifelink. He's concerned by what Andrew will plan to do once he untaps with the Helm and so he swings at Rafik at Andrew. Rafik gets his own Exalted Trigger and gains Double Strike dealing 6 commander damage twice and gaining Steve 12 life. He then passes to Mike. Mike draws for the turn, activates Anjay, discarding Fiery Temper, paying its madness cost, and targets the Eternal Witness, draws from the Bone Miser before he untaps Anjay and drawing a card. Mike then discards Squee and draws a card with Anjay, but doesn't untap her, and Squee being discarded triggers the Bone Miser. This gives Mike a 2-2 zombie token, who comes in, triggers Ayara. Mike then plays a land before tapping out to resolve an anger. Jan plays a tapped Orzov's Guildgate for his turn. Jan does some mental math, counting up something, trying to figure out what to do, casts a Consuming Vapors targeting Steve. Responding to the Vapors, Steve loses one life as he pays for th the three needed to cast his Teferi's Protection and phases out. Sadly, Jan passes the turn. Andrew untaps and pays five to equip the Hydra with the Helm. Goes to combat, getting one token copy with haste, and goes to find a land. He grabs a tapped command tower, but only swings the Angel of Finality. It hits Mike for three, and Andrew moves to his second main phase. You see a Bramble Sovereign join the party, and Andrew passes the turn. Steve phases in and untaps for his turn. Pays one for the Birds of Paradise, heads to combat, Swings Rafik at Andrew again, and before moving to damage, Andrew sacrifices his token copy of Hydra to mill out some of Steve's cards. Hit a lot of good foiled out cards, so Andrew decides to do it again. But not wanting to only focus on Steve, Andrew shares some love, sacrificing his two remaining creatures to fill Mike for seven, before being taken out by a mighty Rafik with commander damage. Mike returns Squee to his hand on his upkeep and draws for turn. Pays three for a Plague Crafter, who enters the battlefield and forces everyone at the table to sacrifice a creature. This also has Mike's opponents lose one while he gains one from Ayara. Mike then taps Anjay, discarding Call to the Netherworld, which he pays zero for the madness cost and returns the Plague Crafter to his hand. Draws from Anjay, untapping her, and draws from the Bone Miser. Mike then taps Anjay again, discarding Squee, and makes a 2-2 zombie token, triggers Ayara as it enters the battlefield. Plays a land, taps red to cycle Viashino Sand Sprinter, drawing a card and gaining another zombie token from the Bone Miser. Dogen comes in, triggers Ayara once more, Mike then passes the turn, discarding down to 7, pitching a land and a Meteor Golem, getting 2 floating black mana and another zombie token who comes in triggering Ayara once again. The end of turn, Jan activates the Indulgent Aristocrat, sacrificing a token to give all of his vampires a plus one plus one counter. Jan plays a tapped Bajuka Bog, exiles Mike's graveyard. Jan then taps enough for Edgar Markov, and before letting him head to combat, Steve decides to cast a Cryptic Command, tapping all of Jan's creatures and drawing a card. Jan passes. 
Steve draws for turn, plays an Ink Moth Nexus, and swings Rafika Jan, dealing 6 commander damage twice and gaining 12 life total. Steve then passes. Mike draws and plays a Temple of the False God. He taps 5 mana for an Obnixilis Reignited and down ticks the Walker to destroy Rafik. Steve is having none of this and moves to protect Rafik with a heroic intervention, which resolves, saving the Rafik. With Plan A not working out for him, Mike moves to Plan B with a recast Playcrafter, who comes in and forces the table to sacrifice a creature. It also has the added benefit of triggering Ayara. Mike then taps Anjay and discards a mountain, making two black mana for the Bone Miser, and uses it to help pay for a Rakdos Locket. It's to combat. Swings most of his team at Steve, dealing 14 damage, then passes the turn. Jan draws and casts a Patron of the Vein in his main phase. The vampire trigger Edgar Markov's Eminus, and before letting that trigger resolve, Steve uses Pact of Negation to counter the spell. Jan still gets his vampire token, though. Jan declares he'll head to combat, and before moving to the Declare Attacker step, Steve uses Swords to Plowshares to exile Edgar Markov. Responding to the spell, once he gains priority, Jan sacrifices Edgar to the indulgent aristocrat to give all the other vampires another 1-1 counter. Swings all out at Steve. Vampires connect, dealing 20. Gains 3 life from the aristocrat. Steve untaps. Has to pay for his Pact of Negation trigger or he loses the game. He does so, and with not much mana left, he opts to finish Jan off with Rafik. Things aren't looking good for our hero, so he takes another 6 commander damage twice. He loses the game. Steve will gain 12 and pass the turn. Mike untaps and draws, which is followed by upticking Omnixilis, losing Mike one life to draw him a card. Mike then taps Anjay to discard from under the floorboards, puts seven men into X. This gains him seven tapped 2 2 black zombies, who all enter and trigger Ayara, draining Steve for seven and gaining Mike seven life. Mike then gets to untap and draw from Anjay, draws from the Bone Miser as well. Mike then taps Anjay and the Locket, floating a mana, and discards a land to make two black mana with Bone Miser. Draws a card from Anjay's trigger and uses the mana to cast Faith of the Devoted. Mike then heads to combat and swings all that he can at Steve for 17. Steve draws and plays an Expedition Misty Rainforest. He pays two mana for an impulse to try to find an answer. Looking at the top four cards of his library, he gets to keep one before bottoming the rest. We then see Enlightened Tutor resolving for Steve, and he loses one life off his canopy to cast it. He settles on Umazawa's Jite and puts it on top. Steve then resolves Slip Through Space to make Rafik unable to be blocked this turn. In addition to the unblockable, it draws him a card, which we know to be the Jite. He cracks the Misty Rainforest to find a land. He grabs a Tundra and has enough mana to cast and equip the Jite. Heading to combat, Rafik heads at the only opponent he can, and connects with Mike for 6 commander damage. Steve gains 6 life, but also Umazawa's Jite trigger, putting 2 charge counters on the equipment. He removes the charge counter to pump Rafik to be a 10-10, and deals 10 more commander damage and gains 10 more life, gaining an additional 2 more charge counters on the Jeet. Mike untaps his zombie horde and draws for the turn. He down ticks Obnixilis in his main phase to take out Rafik finally, and then activates Anjay to discard Nightshade Assassin, paying the madness cost for the creature. Mike also pays the one colorless for his Faith of the Devoted trigger, draining Steve for two and gaining two life. The Nightshade then enters and has Ayara trigger, draining Steve, adding one more life to Mike's total. He also gains an Anjay untap trigger, tapping her again for Anjay's Ravager, but honestly, at this point, all he needs to do is turn things sideways to win. Summary time. Jan's playing Edgar Markov, and really all this deck wants to do is cast vampires and turn them sideways. It's a very, very straightforward plan, and it usually is very, very effective. It wasn't this time, but they'll live to fight another day. From what I saw from Andrew's Tristani deck, the goal seems to be play creatures, make copies, make tokens, and sacrifice them to mill. So it's go big, go wide, and get rid of your opponent's libraries. So... Seems like a solid strategy, and I look forward to seeing it again. Steve's Rafika the Many deck 
Its goal is to put as many swords and equipment and other auras on Feek as possible and kill people with a mighty commander damage swing. The downside to this is you can only really take out one opponent at the time, but if you get ahead of everyone, it's kind of hard to slow you down. Mike was playing Anjay, who I feel is a, a fun draw discard engine, and we really saw the power of it in this game, especially the Bone Miser, being able to generate tokens, generate mana, draw cards after each of his discard. I really, really like Anjay, and I look forward to building more versions of her in the future. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Jan from the Spike Feeders. I had a blast with all of you, and I look forward to seeing you again. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.